moms, this is Holly McLean, the Mommy Answer Lady. During this podcast, I am going to give you a practical way to stop the screaming and fussing without spanking, without getting angry. I'm going to tell you exactly what you can do, how you can do it, and it works every time with every child. So on our last podcast, we talked about the five basics of an effective parental mindset. And they were, number one, you are in charge. Number two, that you have their best interests at heart when you make decisions, so sacrifice. Number three, what you allow in moderation, they may do to excess. Number four, Have a mindset for parental maturity. And number five, build a relationship of trust. So today we're going to talk about the first one in a little more detail. One of the main things that I want to happen in most of these podcasts is that you get practical things that you can actually apply to help you with some of the things that you might be struggling with. Now, the first podcast I did was really just setting your mind in order so that you can be effective in the things that I'm going to tell you are practical applications. So there's three things that each child needs to know in order for you to be in charge and still have a good relationship with them. These three things are really important. They need to know that they are loved by you. So the first one is they know you love them. Number two, they need to know you know what is best for them. And number three, they need to know that you will assert your authority to make sure what's best for them is done. So those three three things are really important that they understand. If they do understand it, they are going to be much more compliant with the things that you're trying to teach them, much more compliant with the training methods that you're going to use. Okay, so one, you love them. Two, you know what's best for them. Three, you will assert your authority to make sure what's best for them is done. Now, I will be referring to those three things, the three things every child needs to know uh, during many of the podcasts that are going to be to come because If the child knows these things, then it creates security in their mind. And when you're trying to be an effective parent, your child has to be secure in these three things. And if they are, then no matter what you're doing, they believe you're doing it for their best interest. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to fuss about it or or be upset about it or they're not always going to agree with it. But in the end, they know you love them. And they know that you know what's best for them. And they know you were not going to give up because you're going to do whatever it takes to make sure what's best for them is done. This is really foundational in becoming a mom who's in charge. If your child knows you're not going to give up because you know what's best for them and you're going to make sure what's best for them is done and you tell them something, they're going to realize you're not going to give up. They're going to have to comply. And they already know this because these are the three things they know. So part of the title of this broadcast or this podcast is Be the Mom. Remember I said that means you're in charge. Being the mom also means being mature in your relationship with your child. That's the first step to taking charge. Sometimes when you become frustrated, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that you are in charge and they are not. It's easy to become an immature parent at the moment of frustration. You want to get down on their level and scream along with them because you're frustrated. But obviously that isn't the right thing to do. So let's discuss what it is to be a mature parent and how that relates to our interaction with our children. So remember I said the definition of maturity is understanding how your present decisions will affect your distant future and acting on that knowledge in a responsible way. So to be a mature parent, that applies to the things you're doing now and how they will, those present decisions, how will they affect your child's distant future and acting on that knowledge in a responsible way. 
So when we think about maturity in this way, we start to recognize maturity has to do with the understanding of time and how it affects our lives. For instance, think about a newborn child. What concept of time do they know? None, right? They only know now, this moment. That's all they know, and they are as immature as they can be. Now think about an infant. Okay, we were talking about a newborn. Now think about an infant. They have begun to understand that an action they perform now will in a few seconds or maybe a minute result in a certain outcome. For instance, when they cry, they hear a sound and people react to the sound. A toddler can think a minute or even several minutes into the future. A preschooler can start to understand tomorrow and an elementary child can begin to recognize a week, a month, or a year. As they mature, they understand time and how it relates to their lives. So now that we understand the definition of maturity, how does that apply to our interaction with our children at the moment of frustration? As we know, maturity doesn't always come along with age, right? Clearly, we all know some grown men and women who do not behave as mature adults. But how does that relate to our relationship with our child? How can we be mature parents? We understand that our present decisions can affect our distant future, but do we act on that knowledge in a responsible way? I like to use the idea of a cookie as a grand grand prize for a child, so you're going to hear me do that a lot (laughs) because it's just a really easy way to explain the idea. So let's say your child wants a cookie and you have told them no for the moment. What's your child's reaction to this disappointment? Are they defiant, angry, rebellious, demanding? Or are they content that you love them? You know what's best for them and especially will assert your authority to be sure what's best for them is done. Back to those three points. If they know these three things, they will comply without defiance. If they do not know any one of these three things, they will act out when they do not get their way. So I'm going to skip to the third point first because that's usually the one that is missing in the equation. Okay, usually your children know you love them, right? Most of you, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably a parent that cares and is interested and being a good parent, right? So if you're listening to this, your children probably do already know you love them. And when we're talking about a toddler in this particular instance, more than likely we're talking about a toddler who's trying to steal a cookie, um, they probably recognize that you know what's best for them. They probably recognize that, you know, you have told them things in the past and they recognize, oh, mom knows. You know, mom knows I shouldn't touch that hot stove, right? Because mom, mom told me something and I realized that she knew what was best for me. So they've kind of already learned that part. So we're going to go to the third part. This is the part that is lacking a lot of times in the interaction with parents and toddlers, especially, or really any children, but toddlers I'm thinking about right now because of the idea that if you don't get, get a hold of your uh, authority at that point, it's a lot harder later. Okay, so the third point was you will assert your authority to make sure what's best for them is done. Okay, that's the part, that third part, that's the part where the child isn't sure whether or not you're going to do that. So you might ask yourself, when you say no to your child about the cookie, do they know you will assert your authority to be sure what's best for them is done? And will you? No matter what their behavior is, no matter how hard it might be, do they know that? If you will do what is best for them in this particular scenario, you can expect a a future of contentment with them. And if you don't, you can expect a future of frustration. So now's the time to take charge. Okay, so they want the cookie. You say no. If they already know these three points, that's it. All done. If they're missing one of those points, now it's the now it's the challenge, right? Now it's the time they're going to cry, they're going to fuss, they're going to stomp their feet and whatever. 
And there are some parents who will then give them the cookie just to make them be quiet. That is what I'm talking about when I say immature parenting. Because you have just taught a child to behave in that fussy, nasty way when they don't get their way if they receive the reward. Okay, if they don't receive the reward and instead they receive something that they do not want by fussing, they will not fuss the next time. So your decision at that moment determines what the future is going to be with that child. And that's what I'm trying to say about mature parenting. In other words, an immature parent is going to think, how can I satisfy my urge to stop that child, to stop the child from behaving like that right now? What can I do? Oh, give them a cookie. Okay, now they're going to stop. That's immature. Mature is, how can I stop that child from ever fussing like this again? That's mature. That's a mature thought. Okay, so I told you I w- we were going to be talking about some practical applications of what you can do. So here you are, you have a child who's upset because they don't get something they want. In our scenario, we're talking about they don't get a cookie when they want one. So right now we're going to basically talk from about 10 months to a year or so to a five-year-old. Somewhere in that age range is what we're talking about. And I'm going to give you some practical uh, applications. What can you do under these circumstances? Okay. So the circumstances that we're setting up here is they want a cookie and they start screaming and crying and fussing, etc. to get it. And do you want them to behave that way? If so, you give them the cookie because you're training them to behave that way. But if you are thinking in the future, then you must act in a responsible way. So I'm going to tell you how to act in a responsible way. The first part of acting in a responsible way is don't give in. Let them know they will not get it at all now that they've behaved badly, no matter what happens. Do not give them the cookie if they have behaved badly. Even after they've calmed down and have done as you asked, the cookie is not available now. The bad behavior has wiped away the possibility of that reward. Okay, so it doesn't matter what they do after that point. When they have begun fussing, screaming, crying, and acting bratty, then they do not get the cookie no matter what. Tell them next time they can ask nicely with a may I please have, and then they may or may not get it. That will be up to you as the mom. This will train them to behave, but no, don't don't think that was it. That's not it. (laughs) They find rewards and happiness when they behave. Remember that. They lose privileges and rewards when they misbehave. If you give in and they get the cookie after a fussy fit, even after they've calmed down, you have just trained them to have more fussy fits. Fussy children are never happy. If you want your child to be happy, never allow them to be fussy. Teach them that fussy behavior is not appropriate and goes unrewarded. Teach them how to express their desires and their needs in appropriate ways, and they will. So now here is the the very practical thing to do. No one enjoys a child who's completely out of control. They're having a temper tantrum, screaming in the store or stomping their feet, or in this case, uh, they are screaming and crying about a cookie. We've all seen it, right? The child is saying, I don't like what is happening and you had better do as I want or else. This is coming from a child who believes they are in charge. When a child has lost control of themselves, they are unhappy and so is everyone else around them. That is actually how they get their way. And it just makes them more unhappy in the end. We all want them to be happy and that is not a happy child. Since they are out of control, which is what is happening, you must take control. Someone needs to, right? Someone needs to be in control. You are the adult. And so you are in charge and you are the mature parent who knows that this behavior leads to bad outcomes now and in the future. You have to take control until they learn to decide to control themselves. This means you must control their out-of-control body. Now, how can you do this? 
It's very important to remember to put aside your emotions and think. Don't let anger get the best of you. Don't get frustration. Don't think about how upset your poor child is. These are all emotions that you need to set aside so that you can make mature parental decisions at the moment. Don't panic and don't give in. Instead, stop and think clearly about what you need to do and do it. Every time that you give a consequence to a child, you want that consequence to relate to what they have done wrong, to the misbehavior. So in other words, if they steal a cookie out of the cookie jar, you don't say the consequence then is going to be that you don't get this toy tonight. That doesn't relate to the cookie. That doesn't relate to the screaming and crying. So you want the result of what they've done to have a consequence that has has a relationship to that somehow, okay? So what they're doing right now in our scenario is they're screaming and crying and fussing because they didn't get something they want. So if they are screaming, they are making loud noises in order to manipulate others, right? They're crying and fussing in order to manipulate others to do what they want. So it's very simple. You cover their mouth. Now, some of you are thinking, there's no way I could do that. There, you also might be thinking, oh, that's so mean. That's taking over their body. Yes, that is. And that's what you need to do. You need to take control. Now, remember, when you're covering their mouth, there's a few things that you need to know about this, okay? I want to make sure that this is very, very clear. Number one, you never, ever obstruct their breathing in any way. They should be able to freely breathe anytime they need to during the entire episode that you are going through, okay? You cover their mouth and don't allow any outburst of noise to come out of their mouth uninhibited. So if they have a stuffy nose, you have to kind of take, take care with that. But, you know, whenever they're screaming, crying, and fussing, it is when air is going out of their mouth. It's not when it's coming in. When it's coming in, they're getting another breath in order to scream some more, right? Okay, so what you want to do is you are taking control and you're saying, I'm not going to allow you to scream and fuss and cry for several reasons. One, because I love you. This is not good for you. It's not good for your uh, emotions. It's not good for you to learn that this is okay to behave this way. You are unhappy and everyone around you is unhappy. So I'm going to take control until you learn to not do this. So you calmly cover their mouth. You do not get angry. You do not yell. You don't, don't do it meanly. You just cover their mouth and keep it there. You are taking control. And remember, this is not hurting them. They are not hurt in any way. They are not even feeling pain. They just don't like it. So as you're covering their mouth, you have to lift it just a little bit every time they have to take a breath. You just lift the bottom part of your hand a little bit and let them breathe in all the air they need. And then you cover it back up when the screaming starts. You cover it more tightly when their screaming starts. And then as they breathe, you let it up a little bit and let the air in. So there's no inhibiting to their breathing whatsoever. Okay. That's very important. Of course, we aren't trying to supplicate our child. <laughs> of course. We are only stopping the noise from coming out. That's all you're doing. And believe me, they're not going to like it, but that's okay. They shouldn't like it, but it isn't hurting them. Okay, so you quietly and calmly cover their mouth and you say, when you are finished screaming, I will let go. And then you wait patiently and calmly. Now they may not be patient and calm. They will be screaming and crying and fussing more because now you're taking control and they don't like it. You may have to have them on your lap and hold them firmly if they decide not to comply with this. They may squiggle and try to move away from your hand. Don't allow it. Hold on to them firmly and have them sit in a chair next to you while you cover their mouth. Do not rub their back or comfort them in any way. Remember, this is not a reward. They should not be comforted when behaving badly. So be calm and patient and wait. No need to yell. No need to become frustrated. You're simply training your child to behave. 
as soon as even a moment of silence happens, lift away your hand. So in other words, they're screaming, they're crying, they're fussing. And then they just for a moment, they're, they're quiet, even for a second or two. And as soon as they do, you take your hand away. And then when they continue to yell, you put it right back and repeat what you said before. When you are finished screaming, I will let go. Now they will soon realize that when they stop crying and fussing, your hand moves away. And when they are finished with their outburst completely, then you let go. Do not allow any more outbursts. If they continue to fuss, start again. Be consistent. Don't give up. After they are completely finished, explain gently and calmly that this behavior is not acceptable and it is not allowed. Smile and ask if they are all finished. They will likely indicate that they are finished quickly by then. This includes any little rebellious outbursts or short bursts of noise. Any show of continuing to scream, cry, or fuss should result in the same method. And remember, no cookie now. Now that they've calmed down, you don't say, now if you be quiet, then you can have a cookie. No, 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 no. That has taught them to scream and cry and fuss in order to get a cookie. If you cover their mouth, then they can stop and then they get the cookie. No, they don't get the cookie because they behave badly. Remember that. If this method is done consistently, it will work. It absolutely will work. Your child will simply see you hold up your hand ready to cover their mouth and they will stop fussing immediately. If your child has been out of control for some time and does not trust that you mean business, it will take much longer the first time or two. Okay, it can take 45 minutes to an hour of sitting there quietly, covering their mouth and waiting for them to be finished. Don't give up. But the next time you do this, it might only take 15 minutes. And then the next time it will take four minutes. And then the next time it will take a minute, a few seconds. It might not take anything. They'll see your hand coming and they'll just stop. This really should be done at home the first few times. You don't want to do this out in public, right? You don't want to go to the store and have a 45 minute session in front of everybody, right? You don't want to do that. If your child is very, very, uh, what's, what's the word? A strong-willed. <laughs> That's the word I'm coming to. If they're very strong-willed, it's going to take a lot longer, especially if you've let them be in charge and you haven't taken control before. It's going to take a long time, the first time. But remember, it will work. You have to have confidence in that and you have to sit quietly and just wait and be patient and don't be frustrated. Okay, so after that, as the fussing is reduced more and more each time this happens and you have to be consistent, pretty soon you'll be able to go out to the store and there will be no problem. You will be able to go anywhere you need to go and there will be no problem. You say no, no to a cookie and if they start screaming and fussing, you say, you put your hand up like you're going to put your hand over their mouth, they will stop immediately. Believe me, it will work and you don't have to be mean about it. You are helping this child be happy. You are helping this child not have that fussy fit. And when they don't have fussy fits, they become happier. They recognize that you're in charge and they become relaxed and they are just secure in the fact that when you say something, it means that you mean it. You don't have to, they don't have to worry about it. Okay. They don't have to think, well, if I scream and cry enough, am I going to get what I want? They already know they're not. So being the mom sometimes is challenging, but believe me, you can enjoy your young children and have a great parent-child relationship with them. You can. This is one method to do it. Other people have other methods. One of the things you can do is spank a child, and we'll talk about that in another session, but it's not necessary to spank them for this kind of thing at all. This takes care of it. It really, really does. So I hope you'll give it a try. But seriously, if you're going to do it, you need to commit and you need to recognize that you need to be consistent. And seriously, in anything that you do with children, if you want them to learn something and you want to train them in some way, you have to be consistent. That's just a basic, right? 
So now you know what to do whenever your child starts to fuss and cry. And let me, let me explain really quickly that I think you probably already recognize this, but I want to make sure you do. I'm not talking about crying for legitimate reasons. I'm talking about crying for fussy, fussiness sake, for brattiness sake, that kind of thing. If your child, you know, breaks their leg, it's fine for them to cry, right? If there is a reason their pet dies or something like that, you know, they can cry. It's fine to cry. There's nothing wrong with that. It is the bratty, manipulative fussiness that is not acceptable. And frankly, fussiness at all is not acceptable. So this is what you need to help them stop doing. And believe me, you will be happier and they will be happier and everyone else around you will be happier if you learn how to do this method and your child understands that you're not going to allow them to fuss. Everyone will be happier. You'll see. And that's part of our goal, right? As moms, we want our children to be happy and they can't be happy if they're fussy, right? So I'm going to end the podcast now. I hope that you will try this method. Believe me, there will be time in the future that you can ask me questions if you have any questions about this or any other thing that um, I might mention. There's going to be a time and an opportunity for you to ask questions. The next podcast that we're going to have is going to be about parental sacrifice, about putting your child's best interests as your first priority. So in the meantime, remember moms, you can do this.